So the best thing about this is that that's the extent of the inter introduction. So now, the, the, title of suggest t t the title of today's talk is building an awesome e-commerce site in 25 minutes. And the tagline is actually really important, that looks good. So some of you may have been at my uh, presentation at Drupal Down Under last year, where we did a very, very similar thing. We built, a, we built an e-commerce website in 25 minutes. And one of the things that I'd say about it is that it looked pretty ugly by the end. It was functional, it was serviceable, but it didn't have much of an aesthetic appeal. And one of the big things we're going to look at today is how we create a site that not just does a good job, but actually gives the users a decent uh, user experience at the end and uh, appears attractive, at least in my opinion, um, with minimal effort. Now, one of the big things is that there's a 25 minute time limit. 25 minutes is a bit of a challenge. We'll see how we go. Um, we're running the demo locally, so hopefully the interwebs won't slow us down, but you know, we'll see how we go. A little bit about me. Um, uh, my name's Andrew. I'm the Managing Director of Real World Technology Solutions. Real World Technology Solutions is a voice data and communications company. Uh, we provide internet access services, content hosting, uh, network consulting and engineering, very much down the technical end of the world. And we also do lots of uh, application integration for our customers. So integrating e-commerce websites with business process um, and uh, sites that offer more business function than just being something that exists on the web. I'm married, I have two beautiful kids who you can see in that photo there, one of whom has really started to talk and the other one who just learnt to sit up last week. So um, that's a little bit about me. Um, so to start with, I thought it would be good to have a bit of a look at what actually makes a good e-commerce site. And I guess there are three things which drive e-commerce site development and e-commerce uh, site effectiveness when it comes to an actual deliverable product. The first one is aesthetics. So how the site looks and how the site feels is really, really important. If you have an ugly site, people are less likely to buy from you. It's relatively straightforward. The second thing is customer experience. So the experience of your customers interacting with the store is very important. One of the things is that uh, they say that for every click someone has to make to get from a, an initial looking at a product through to the checkout, you lose 50% of your traffic. So if it takes you 20 clicks to get to the end of your checkout process. By the time of it, you start with 100 viewers, you've left with one person that completes your checkout. So things like uh, what the customer engagement process is, what the process from viewing the product right through to checkout is very important to making sure that your uh, store is successful. And speaking of success, the other thing you care about is conversion rate. It's great to run an e-commerce site that attracts 10 million viewers. But if only two people buy your product, you're not going to stay in business very long and you're not going to be able to afford the hosting to run the site, let alone be able to keep your business afloat. So the next question is what actually drives people to convert their sales? What actually gets them to the end? So the first thing is, uh, which is going to come up, is an ease of shopping experience. So people want to have a smooth, seamless shopping experience. Quality of customer service and how you as a business interact with them is also really important. And unfortunately, the best e-commerce website in the world isn't going to solve that problem for you. So things like how you respond to your customers. There is an element of what information you make available to them. Do you publish a phone number? Are you accessible by email? How long do you take to respond to uh, questions when people ask you? They're not so things that an e-commerce site is going to solve for you, but they're things that a business model that's going to build a successful e-commerce site needs to think about. And the last thing that's really effective is peer pressure. Now, my wife uh, is obviously my wife, and we have two kids, and she's part of a mother's group on Facebook. And we were discussing uh, yesterday uh, how she goes about buying online. And I, I'm pretty sure she spends about $2,500 per month online. Um, she may choose to correct me on that at a later stage when she hears this talk, but she's not here right now. Um, and the main reason why she gets to buy all of the things that she buys is because mothers in her mother's group discuss where to go and buy them and you can get this. Oh, and I bought this baby carrier and it's really awesome. Oh, and this stroller looks really good and dot, 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 dot. So the communal aspect of purchasing is very, very important and is a very, very big driver for people purchasing things online. So um, a company called Comscore did a survey at the start of 2012 
about what actually makes a successful website. And you can see up there one of those classical business four quadrant graphs showing you how important different things are. And you can see ease of checkout is very much up there in the, in the high importance and also gives customers great high satisfaction. But then you've got things like ease of making returns and uh, exchanges, which is not something that you know, is considered particularly a satisfaction thing, but still has a really, really high importance. So if you don't have that, your customers are less likely to come to your site and buy there. Now, why do I show you these things? I show you these things because each of these factors, which you can see in the list, and you can kind of see a score that they rated those things, uh, uh, sort of how important people found them as a percentage um, value. Um, those things are important because when you choose an e-commerce package and, and an e-commerce environment to work in, you need something that's going to facilitate your business operation to be able to do these things as easily as possible. So if your e-commerce platform makes it really hard to handle returns and exchanges, then that's going to become a frustration for you and for your users. If your e-commerce platform has a very complicated checkout process, it's going to be a big frustration point for you and your users. If you don't have the option to choose uh, shipping options, that becomes a big problem. And all of these lead to a reduced conversion rate, which lead to reduced profitability for your business, which is a bad thing. So the next thing to think about is where are people actually interacting with websites these days, and particular e-commerce sites? Go back to 2000, it's the boom of the dot-com era. People are starting to get internet in their homes and people are all buying things on their PCs. But what's happened over the last two years is that sales have increasingly moved to mobile. And that's as a result of things like the success of the iPad and Android tablets, but also the increased adoption of smartphones. So people, at the end of 2011, 9% of e-commerce transactions were made from a mobile device which I find completely staggering thinking about it. I wouldn't expect that someone would sit there on their mobile, browse a website and go, I'm gonna buy that and go through the checkout process beginning to end. But then I think about my own behavior and I walk into Woolworths and I pull up my mobile phone and I open the Woolworths app and I say I'm looking for milk and then it says it's in aisle seven and all of a sudden I realize that I'm interacting with the businesses that I deal with increasingly via my mobile device and realize that the rest of the world is probably doing that too. So all of these things are factors you need to consider in an e-commerce platform for your online store. So I guess this begs the question, what are your options? What can you do out there if you want to get up and running really easily and really quickly? Well, the first thing, the first one that I, I see that I come across all the time is a platform called Big Commerce. Big Commerce is very, very simple. You can see their website there. You can very quickly type in your store name, your name, and an email address and a password, and be up and running on a website five minutes, they say. Put your products in, be ready to go, fantastic, exciting. The next one we come across is a platform called Shopify. Shopify, very simple shopping experience. Again, very, very easy to get going. All of these uh, sites you pay a, a nominal monthly fee to gain access to, and when you do that, you uh, can uh, put your products in, you've got a very simple checkout process, people can start buying stuff from you, it's all pretty straightforward. You've got community-driven sites like Etsy where you can get online and you can sell all your homewares and jewelry that you've made and the, the cupcake that you designed last week that you want everyone to buy. These are out of the box solutions which work really, really well. They're really simple to build and deploy and they actually look pretty good. So when it comes down to choosing what your site's gonna look like, they make it really easy to have a really good looking, really easy website. But there are some disadvantages of using a platform like that. They're very difficult to customize. So if you want to do something that's outside the box, you need to integrate with, a, with another business system, you decide you want to have lots of content on your site uh, that you want people to be able to view and access that isn't just a store, uh, they're not really designed for that. Speaking from an Australian context, they're mostly designed for US and Europe. And so that's not a particularly ideal scenario if you want to start up an Australian online store. And they're difficult to integrate with back office processes. So if you've got things like you're using MYOB or Xero or QuickBooks or something like that as your accounting system, it's difficult to get that information across. If you have an ERP process which you need these stores to heavily integrate with, there's a lot of work which you need to do to be able to get them to that point. So I guess the question is, what is the solution? Well, Dries touched on it in his keynote this morning. He pointed out that Drupal sites are all about content, community, and increasingly commerce. And he identified that as one of the big things that Drupal 8 is looking to address. And I think that Drupal today starts to have some decent solutions to this problem. 
So what are they? Well, the first one is something called Ubercart. If you ever built an online store for Drupal 6, you probably built it in Ubercart. It's not a bad e-commerce platform, but it's pretty ugly. They were the best screenshots I could find. And I had to put them, like rotate them so that they would look kind of more funky and awesome. Um, but all Ubercart stores look like that. They might have an ugly yellow background. They might have bright green text. Um, but that's essentially the look and feel that your customers get. They don't feel nice. They don't feel uh, easy to interact with. One of the things that I keep coming across is this product called Drupal e-commerce. I'd love to show you a screenshot of this, but I couldn't get it to install and the website's down. Uh, it does have a Drupal 7 version. Maybe it's good. I, I don't know. There are, it's been developed largely in Australia. So uh, maybe some of the people behind it are here this week and you can find them and uh, have a chat to them about it. But we're going to talk about something called Drupal Commerce. Now, Drupal Commerce is a set, uh, is basically a rewrite of an e-commerce platform specifically for Drupal 7. It's built on Drupal 7 core technologies, things like entities. It's got high dependency on things like views, so everything is built in that way. It's, from a site building perspective, if you've built a Drupal site, it's not too difficult to get into Drupal Commerce and get up and running pretty quickly. And last year, we built a Drupal Commerce store that looked largely like this. This is a sample screenshot from uh, Lullabot's, uh, one of Lullabot's demos of, uh, of Drupal Commerce. Um, but it's pretty ugly. That, that's sort of my feeling. It looks like a Drupal 7 default install. There's nothing pretty. There's nothing exciting about it. And I'd be pretty embarrassed if I showed that to my customers as an example of what a Drupal Commerce site can do. Unfortunately, the people behind Drupal Commerce saw that this was a problem and thought, what can we do to get around this? And so they put together something called Commerce Kickstart, and in fact, that's how that site came about. But they recently revamped it into something called Commerce Kickstart 2. And most of what we do today is going to be built on that concept. So, so this is a Commerce Kickstart 2 out of the box store with uh, Australian chosen as the defaults. Now, it's still not right. You can th see things like the currency is wrong. Uh, it's selling t-shirts, that's great, but my business sells mugs and so it's not really going to be appropriate. So what we're going to do is we're going to change some things. We're going to work with a, a commerce kickstart based thing and uh, we're going to turn it into a mug store. And hopefully by the end of 25 minutes we'll have a site that looks exactly like this. And if you go to makemeamugplease.com you can see that as a real site now. So let's build it. How are we going to build it? We're going to start with something called Commerce Kickstart, which you can find at drupal.org slash project slash commerce underscore kickstart. The first thing I'm going to say is if you're going to build a commerce site and you have never used commerce before, only start here. Do not go to the commerce project and download it. Do not try and build it yourself. You will waste hours and hours and hours of endless frustration when you go, but I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to get there, blah, 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 blah. Start here. It makes it simple and easy. Even if you think you're going to change your store down the track, start here. Don't go anywhere else. It's got everything in it. The theme for Commerce Kickstart is built on the Amiga theme. So if you want to change the way that it looks and feels, uh, and your designers want to work in a responsive environment, Amiga's not a bad place to start. And Commerce Kickstart has all of the bits and pieces you need in there. But again, this is a US Europe-centric solution. Unfortunately, it's not particularly friendly to Australia. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to add Commerce Australia. Commerce Australia is a really, really simple module. There are two components. They've got a GST rule set, and they fix up prices so that they actually look like Australian prices. We're going to play a little bit with Commerce Custom Order Status. Um, my company used to run a computer hardware online store. We uh, sold lots of bits and pieces to people all around Australia. Lots of people bought from us. And very quickly, we discovered that we needed to be able to tell our customers things like, We've got your order packed and it's ready to go, and they need to be able to log in and see that. We've got uh, uh, your order has shipped and it's gone, and here's the tracking details and bits and pieces. Commerce custom order status lets us build extra status information into an order, like your items are on back order, blah, 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 blah. So we're going to play a little bit with that so that you can get a bit of back office integration and, and improve the experience. And all being well, we're going to do real-life payment with Commerce Secure Pay AU. 
Now, um, SecurePay is a merchant company. They are owned by Australia Post, as far as I'm aware. Uh, they've got integration with all the banks. So if you've already got an FPOS or your customers have an FPOS terminal with their bank, they can apply for an online merchant facility with their bank and very easily and simply connect it up to SecurePay. You can do the same thing with other services like eWay or PayPal or bits and pieces like that. But this is pretty easy to get up and running, and we'll show you exactly what that looks like. So without much further ado, this is the live site. You can see it's got a nice slideshow rotation thing happening. And um, what I'm actually going to do at this point is get adventurous and try and merge my display so that I'm not working over there and over here. Uh, arrangement and mirror displays. Let's see what happens. This is highly technical. Um, and the next thing we're going to do here, uh, yep, so that's not too bad. And we'll come into Safari. So you can see we've got a nice slider here. I'll just show you a couple of quick features around. I can click on these different things and it changes. So, so we've got some slides there. We've got some product call out boxes here, which we haven't changed from the defaults. Um, I'm pretty sure this store has some. There we go. Thank you, Drupal. Um, so let's go back to management. That's going to be awesome. I would show you manage my orders, but that's not going to work. And we're not going to work on the production site. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to work on a local version here. So on my computer, I'm hosting dev.makemeamugplease.com. It's a really, really exciting website. Don't go there. Um, and let's get started. Okay? What I've done here is I've downloaded the uh, Commerce Kickstart package already. And uh, it lives on my lovely VM server over here. And it's telling me that I have a file permissions issue. So excuse the fact that you know I'm just about to do something really nasty and dirty, but it's going to solve the problem. Um, if you use a web host that uses cPanel or something like that, most of these things get taken care of for you without too much trouble. Um, we're going to put in some database, database details, um, really, really complicated. We're going to hit save and continue. And once again, we discover that my database password's wrong. That's a bit of a problem. Um, live demos. Grant all privileges on. Me make meme dot star to meme identified by password semicolon. Let's see how that goes. Password. Really? That's because that's not what the database is called. Show database. How about we just do create database meme? There we go. Yeah, I'll get there. Thanks is really annoying. OK, drop database test, create database test, database test. I could also use PHP my admin, which is installed on this dev environment. Woo OK, <laughs> pressure. And we hit install. So, so far, we're three minutes into our install process, and it's taken that long because of my incompetence. Um, <laughs> wait for a little while. So these are all of the reasons why you use Commerce Kickstart. You saw that it installed a lot of modules. You didn't see what most of them were called. And those modules make Commerce Kickstart make commerce work for you. So this website is called make me a mug please exclamation mark webmaster at make me a mug please dot com. We're going to leave the credentials at defaults. We're going to go we're in Australia and we're in Sydney, believe it or not. We're going to hit save and continue. And we're now at the point where we're going to choose some defaults. So we're going to go Australia. We're going to install the demo store. I think that's a great place to start, particularly if you've never built an e-commerce store before. It gives you some sample products, some sample content to work with. And it's actually pretty easy to customize stuff from there. So we're going to start there. Um, we don't really care about translation because all of our customers are in Australia and I don't speak any other languages. Um, we're going to put our tax rate into Australia. And we're not going to care about sample tax rate. So you can use one of the US or European defaults. It'd be really nice if there was an Australian default in there. Maybe someone can contribute a patch for that down the track. We hit Create and Finish, and now we just wait a little bit longer. Coming up to five minutes, so we've got 20 minutes left.
my sense of time is elastic too. So if you had a look and you went, well, it's actually only been three and a half minutes. We'll see how we go. So it's activating all of the demo content to do the different bits and pieces. Now, um, some of the things is that there are some demo features of bits and pieces in the site which are defined in code um, as part of the Commerce Kickstart package. That does make it a little bit easy, a little bit difficult to change uh, things, but you can turn them off and add them back in in bits and pieces. I'll show you what some of those things are. I won't necessarily show you today how to get around that, um, but um, we'll sort of get there. Um, and we're importing the content now. I need a faster laptop. I think I said this last year, and then I bought a faster laptop, and now I think I need a faster one again. Unfortunately, Apple doesn't make them faster than this at the moment. 10 of 21. Need some. You get a very, 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 so the question was, what do you get if you install it without the sample content? You get all of the modules installed, you get a, a basic framework, but you don't get things like menus in there. You don't get your default product content types in there. You don't get your default products. So even if you're going to install it without the sample content, what you should do is install another install with the sample content to see how they suggest you do stuff. Because if you don't do it that way, you'll go, how do I do that? And just get very confused. Um, so the biggest thing about this is, is copy, learn by copying what someone else does. And we're almost there. Woohoo! We're at our site. And as soon as we get into our first install of Commerce, the first thing that happens is that we get left with a getting started screen. So now this getting started screen includes some lovely videos about how to do different things. It has a user guide so that you can work out how to get up and running. So if I miss something or say something wrong or you just want to do something we don't show you how to do today, you can install Commerce Kickstart and follow the help. It's great. Uh, there's some extra services you can buy. Never used them. Maybe they're good. You can tell me once you've used it. And there's some quick links to do some basic things. So pretty much we're done. Um, so that was seven minutes, and um, I'm going to quit Dropbox in just a minute, um, and uh, we'll uh, go from there. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, now, unfortunately, we're not quite done, though. You can see our currency settings are wrong. Um, we don't really have any understanding of GST or different bits and pieces. So we still need to do a little bit more. Now, I have pre-downloaded into my Drupal install a couple of modules. The first one which I downloaded was the Commerce Australia module. So this has the Commerce Australian currency display and also has the GST module. So we're just going to save those, turn them on. And what that does is that gives us tax rules for GST so that when I go to buy something, it knows whether or not to add GST, it knows that GST in Australia is 10%, and it knows that GST doesn't apply when you ship stuff outside of Australia which is really important because if your website sells things outside of Australia, it actually has to distinguish between the price of what you're going to sell. Um, so those uh, modules have now been installed and we'll just close that. And this is where having a 1024 by 768x screen isn't great for Drupal anymore. So now if we come back to our home page, Commerce Kickstart, you can see our price currency. That's the first thing you notice is updated. So we're now saying $0.99 instead of 0.99 AUD. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the logo of the site. So we're going to go to site settings, we're going to go to appearance, we're going to change the theme settings, and we're going to no longer use the default logo. We're going to upload a custom logo and our store, we're going to save the configuration. And there we go. Okay, most of the way there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change the slider. So you can see here, it's great if we're selling t-shirts. We don't sell t-shirts, we sell some mugs. So we're going to go to content, we're going to add content, we're going to go to slideshow, we're going to uh, choose a file first because I can't remember what's in them. And so we're going to do your logo here and we're going to call it your logo here. Um, now if you have a look, have I got uh, open up in Chrome? Uh, you can see when you have a look here, it's got add your own custom logo. So from a commerce kickstart perspective, if you're happy to go with this default theme, this is what's called the uh, headline and this is what's called the tagline. It's a bit confusing given the fields are out of order, um, but 
we're going to say custom logo and here make your own. Okay? And now, and we can put a link to some content here, so we'll make it uh, uh, custom logos. We're going to hit save. Okay? Let's put some content in. But for actually interestingness, we go back to the home page and we can see now that has appeared as the first and primary slider on our home page. And we've got that there. Now, we actually need to do a little bit more than that because we don't want the other content that's there. So we'll just come in here and we'll delete those things. Bulk operations, delete content. If at any point anyone has a question about what I'm doing, please stop me and ask. And we're just going to confirm that we don't need those anymore. And very quickly, and you can see it's updated. The other arrows on the side aren't there anymore. So very, very simple, very easy to get in there and change. Um, we're going to add a couple more slideshow items, and then we'll get to the fun stuff of adding products. So choose file. We're going to go coffee your way. Uh, uh, your coffee uh, your way. Uh, your coffee your way. We're going to save that. And then we're going to content add content uh, slideshow. And this is going to be whatever the last one is, which is save 25% on shipping. Save 25% on shipping big orders, um, big discounts um, when you order big. Because that's great marketing, right? Um, now, I didn't put links on those last two things. So when you come back here, and now you can see uh, save up to 25% off, and you can see you know, that's, that's a bit of a problem, but someone can go in and fix that a bit later. Um, I don't have a link here, but I do have a link here, because I didn't put in a link. You can also see that uh, clean URLs haven't enabled on my install for some reason. I don't know why that is. Someone can fix that on my computer later. Um, next thing that we're going to do, we're going to change the menu. So in my store, we sell mugs. We don't sell things to carry or to geek out or to wear. So how about we start by removing all of the sample products? So we'll come in here and we'll just delete them. And I'm going to say confirm because we don't really care. And the next thing we'll do is we'll modify this menu so that we have less stuff in it. But you can just as easily modify the menu so that you have your own categories and content. So we're going to go to Site, Settings, Structure. We're going to click on Menus. And we're going to modify, I think it's the main menu. Yes, here we are. OK. We don't care about to carry. We don't care to geek out. And we don't care about to wear. And we save configuration. OK. We've now got a store that starts to look like the kind of thing that we want. Now, we sell two kinds of mugs in my store. Uh, because that's all we have time to do in 25 minutes. So we're going to go products, we're going to add a new product, we're going to call it a drink product, and we're going to call it a tea cup. This is a tea cup, it's pretty cool. And it is a red tea cup, and it is $15, and it's including GST, and we're going to put in an image of the cup, which we're going to go here, Red cup, where are you? Uh, red mug. Surely I have a red cup. I had a red cup once upon a time. Um, maybe downloads. Um, there we go. There's my red cup. Upload. And I'm going to save that variation. But I actually sell multiple kinds of mugs. So I'm going to add a new variation. I also sell a blue one, which is also $15, including GST. And I'm going to choose a file, and we're going to come back over here to mug stock, and we're going to grab a uh, blue, 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 blue cup. Blue cup, there we go. We're going to save that variation. Now, we're going to choose a collection to drink with. We're going to choose a category, coffee mugs. I'm going to say it's unisex, and we don't really care about brand. Now, those things are just fields which correlate to, I'm going to be a little bit Drupal technical for half a second, but correlate to the views which display stuff here. So when I click on to drink with, I get a coffee mugs category, which looks something like this. And it's now got my teacup, which is available in two colors, red and blue. When I click on my teacup, 
you can see the red one, I select the blue one, and it updates and changes. So very easy to do custom product commerce options. And uh, I can order two of those, and I can add it to my cart. You can see it's pretty nicely added it to my cart, and I can go straight to the checkout now with the right product image, or I can continue shopping, and I can buy the red one, and I'll buy four of the red one. I'm going to add it to my cart, and that's fantastic. I'll just continue shopping, and I really like this, so I'm going to tweet about this and say, uh, teacups are really awesome, and we're going to go hash Drupal con and tweet. And everyone's going to go, what on earth? Because that URL doesn't exist in the real world. But that's OK. Um, but you can now see that that's publicly recommended by Andrew Yeager. And I think if I reload this page, no, nah, it hasn't updated properly. Um, Commerce Kickstart also supports social integration. So if you want people to log into your website using their Facebook credentials or their Twitter credentials, you need to go to Facebook's website or Twitter's website and get uh, application authentication tokens. Doesn't work really well in a kind of sandbox testing environment like this. But it means that when people need to log in to update their uh, usernames or passwords, you want to store their shipping information and bits and pieces, they don't need their own account, which increases people's like, ease of them accessing your website, but then also increase your so increases your social connectiveness. So I hope what you're starting to see is that a lot of the things that we're talking about is how people interact with other people, how people interact with the store, and how you as a store builder can start to get in and do things pretty quickly. Let's just talk for a second about a checkout here. So we go into my checkout. We've got uh, a teacup blue. And you can see it's automatically built that product code for me. And a red teacup. And you can go in the back end and adjust those if you've got ISBNs or I don't know, barcodes or something you want on your products. It's got the GST amount, $8.16, which is right, $90 order. We're going to go to the checkout. And we're going to choose uh, some shipping methods in here. So Andrew Yeager, 1 Somewhere Street, uh, Sydney, New South Wales, 2000. My shipping information is the same as my billing information. We're going to go check out. We're going to get express shipping, which is $15. And um, we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. Let's put an extra 2 and a 1 on that. Uh, that's a credit card number which passes some validation. And there we go, I've got an order and I can view my order. Okay, so this is what I as an end user would see on the site for my order. It's got some order history so people can see what's going on. Um, I, because I'm an admin on the site at the moment, I can log in and update some information about where the order's up to. But I can see lots of little bits of information in there. Okay, basic functioning e commerce store. We've still got a couple of things to do to make it worthwhile. So the first thing is we need to take people's money really. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our store settings. And in fact, we're going to go to our site settings and we're going to turn on the secure pay module. So if I come in here and I search for secure pay, um, which I've already downloaded, I'll just turn it on and I'm going to hit save down here. And wait a couple of seconds for that to finish. Okay, and then we're going to go to store settings, payment methods. We've got to set some things for the Secure Pay API to work properly. So currently we've got the Kickstart example payment module. We're going to disable that because we don't want to take payment that way anymore. Um, but we'd like to take payment via the Secure Pay credit card model we, module. We're going to enable that. We're going to confirm that. We're going to come in here and we're just going to set the settings so that it can do its basic things. So we can set some events that uh, affect how it works and whether or not this payment module would be available. That's pretty complicated and we're not going to go into that today. Um, but uh, where is the settings that I need? I need to get to, I thought it was there. Um, here we go. This is what we need. So we need a merchant ID and a password to get in there and put these in. So in my case, I'm just going to quickly grab the sample merchant ID and password. And we're going to use that one there. And we're going to put that there. And we're going to grab that one there. And we're going to paste that. We're in Australian dollars. And because this is just a test account, we do that. And we're going to hit save. OK, we've now got live credit card processing. Well, semi-live, because I can't use a real credit card number and I can't take someone's payment. but you know, you get the idea. So that's done. Um, and then the last thing which we need to do to sort of make this uh, functional is what I talked about earlier about having status messages for orders. So we're just going to jump into modules and we're going to go to status. 
that's probably a, there we go, commerce custom order status, which is the module which I'd already downloaded. And we're just going to enable that. Okay, store settings, um, pretty sure it's under order settings. And you can see here, now we can see all of our order statuses in there and we can add a new one. So if I want to do something like preparing shipment, and this happens while your order is pending before completed, and we're just going to enable that and save it, and uh, preparing shipment, and hit save. Okay, so what that means now is that when I come into this order here, didn't have preparing shipment in here before, but I do now and I can save that. Okay. Now, if you want to do something like trigger an email to go to your customers whenever you put their order into preparing ship shipment status, um, you can use uh, what's called rules within Drupal Commerce to trigger actions on the basis of that. So you can write a rule which says when an order is changed to preparing shipment status, send an email or post to Twitter or any of the other things that there are rules modules out there to allow you to do. And there's some really, really, really good videos on how to manage those things and make those changes, which you can find under uh, the help within Commerce Kickstart, which you can just get access to there. And we'll talk a little bit more about some other places you can go for help down the track. So just to prove that that actually did work and that I can now buy something with my uh, credit card, we're going to jump in here, we're going to go to drink with, we're going to grab this, we'll buy a thousand of these. I'm going to add it to my cart and I'm going to go to straight to the checkout this time around and check out. Okay, quantities are right. You can see the GST is all right. Now, it saved my address from last time because my account's logged in and uh, I can ship it to a different address or the same as my billing address. Continue the next step, exactly what we've seen before. We've got some shipping options and we'll pop in a card number. Now this is really going to send off to the, uh, to the, secure pay gateway and ask them to authorize the card. And uh, that's a magic test card number that they provide. What did I do wrong this time? 4444333322211111123. Continue to the next step. There we go, checkout's complete. You can view my order and uh, payments being taken and everything else like that. So pretty much that's very, very simply everything you can do with big commerce that's useful and everything you can do with Shopify that's really useful to get you up and running in an e-commerce store in well under 25 minutes. So that's the start of what I wanted to show you. And we're just going to turn off mirroring again. And we do that under arrangement, don't we? This is all very technical for me. There we go. Beautiful. And now we come back here and we go, oh, that's the other important thing to show. Okay. One of the things I mentioned earlier on was mobile. Now, because Commerce Kickstart is built on a responsive Amiga theme, if I grab my iPhone and I go to this website, it actually readjusts all of the content and all of the layouts to be appropriate for mobile. And I can come in here and I can, under here I can go to to drink with and I get a sensible product layout and there's my teacup and I can click on that. I can come in here and there's the red one. I can actually get the blue one and it changes and updates. And you notice that it didn't, while the page refreshed, it didn't send me to a different spot in the page, and now I've got the blue teacup, and I can buy it all from my iPhone from here. But what if I was using an iPad? Well, fortunately, here's one I prepared earlier, which is not going to fit. So we might just rotate that, rotate right. Yeah, that's better. And we'll just, Safari, yeah. So here's a website I prepared earlier. And you can see it's rearranged the content to be appropriate for an iPad and look pretty good. So mobile integration straight out of the box, no effort from me. I've got a functioning working mobile site straight to market in less than 25 minutes. I had my product images ready. I had some other content prepared. But I haven't done anything particularly special to get up and running to do that. So the questions from here are what else is cool? 
So what else might I want to do in my e-commerce store that I haven't shown you right now? Well, the first one is shipping with Australia Post. So I can use uh, some Drupal Commerce modules which are available to put in product weights and product sizes. And then uh, there's a sandbo sandbox project which you can get. Uh, hopefully it will be released soon as a full project uh, for Australia Post shipping. And it, uh, with an Australia Post shipping API uh, key, will let you ask Australia Post how much will it cost to send this item via Express Post or regular post or international post anywhere in the world. So you can have real live, up-to-date shipping figures on your website. You might decide that you want to do something a little bit different or a little bit special. And there's some web form integration available for uh, Drupal Commerce. Now, what this might mean is that you have a form where you collect a lot of information about someone. And as part of that form, you want them to choose which color t-shirt you want them to buy or something like that. Uh, web form integration allows you to include products into your uh, web form so that as part of the form that they fill out, they can say, I want this product or that product or different bits and pieces like that. And then when they submit the form, those things get added to their cart. And then you can redirect them through to a checkout using rules uh, in standard ways with web form, which is pretty nice and pretty, pretty smooth. Um, the last one is uh, one of the things we might want to do in our online store that sells mugs is to custom print some logos on them or to give the opportunity for someone to write some text like dad is the best or something like that on their cup. And Commerce Custom Product, um, which is over here, actually lets you do that very easily. You can uh, turn this module on, and this lets you add some functionality and some features to the, uh, to the Commerce Products websites, uh, and to the Commerce Products uh, bits and pieces, so that when someone adds it to their cart, you can ask them for some additional information, like what do you want to print on your cup, or bits and pieces like that. That gets saved with the order, which you can then go and find. So one of the questions that people often ask is, I've got started with Drupal Commerce and I'm stuck. Where can you go for help? Well, the first thing is that there's a help link in the toolbar, which we showed you before. The next place you can go is to drupalcommerce.org. Drupalcommerce.org has hundreds, well, not quite, but many, many videos that show you how to do basic tasks. Like, if you wanted to do commerce customizable products, how would you do that? You can go to that website, and there's a video there which takes you step by step through how to turn that feature on. If you want to play with discount rules, so you want to offer someone a 25% discount when they buy 1,000 items, there's a video there that takes you step by step through all of the steps you need to go through to be able to do that. Very easy to follow, very easy to, to do. Each video is only five or 10 minutes, so it doesn't take you that long to get through, and it's a really, really great resource. The videos are also available on Vimeo, and they're put together by Commerce Guys, who are uh, the company who are behind uh, most of the Drupal Commerce development. They've put huge amounts of resources and energy into putting that together. You can jump onto IRC to the Drupal Commerce uh, channel. Um, Unfortunately, that's largely a US-based and European-based uh, community. So if you happen to get there during Australian business hours, not many people are there to offer you help. Um, I think that's a real drawback. And I'd love to see more Australian uh, development companies and site builders that are actually using uh, commerce uh, as part of their businesses get on board with the project so that we've actually got an Australian presence uh, and an Australian live interaction, interactive response community. Um, and there are a number of Australian companies we can help you out. I know Reality Loop does a lot of development, and I'm sure there's lots of other companies around here which are, uh, do work with Drupal Commerce that would be happy to help you out with custom modules or integration, or even just helping you conceptualize what your Drupal Commerce platform needs to look like if you're going to grow. Yep. Okay. of which I take it you are one, who I've not actually met you face to face yet. So that's exciting and scary. Um, <laughs> so um, does anyone have any questions? We're at that point in the world. Yes. One of the features that we're already using is Yep. So we haven't done anything with stock management in the demo that we did there. Um, I guess the approach which we've taken uh, in, in the basic standard store is that you have limitless stock and you'll manage uh, stock management in another process. There are modules uh, available for commerce uh, that 
do very basic stock management. So you can put in a number of items you have on hand and when someone buys it, it decre decrements it and you can have some rules which say when the item's out of stock, don't sell it. So that's the basic stuff which you get out of the, out of the box. When it comes to things like back ordering, my understanding is that at the moment it's a little bit more complicated. What I'd like to see happen down the track is uh, some more back office integration things being built. So um, uh, my company's just switched accounting platforms to a platform called Xero, uh, which is a web-based interactive uh, online accounting platform. It's really, really easy to use and very simple. Um, and there are plugins for that that do really advanced stock management. So I can put in there, I can manage where my orders are going, manage purchase orders out to suppliers, track serial numbers of items, and all those sorts of things which become important as you start to move larger quantities of things. And I'd like to see someone say, hey, that's a really important problem to solve. Let's take some of these already web service enabled uh, platforms which are out there that are really good stock management tools and manage serial number tracking and bits and pieces and build some plumbing to join them together. Much like I'd like to see someone say, hey, Xero is a really great accounting package and more and more businesses in Australia and New Zealand and the US are starting to use it. So let's actually build a web services layer which takes your Drupal Commerce order once I hit complete on it and then fire it straight off to zero so that when I go to zero, the invoice is in there. Or even better, when I get to the end of the uh, checkout process and I hit confirm, it bumps off to zero, puts the order straight in there, ready to go, applies the payment so my accounts people have less work to do and all of my accounting and invoicing systems are all linked up smoothly. There are a couple of things you need to think about there. So uh, accounting packages generally need to know things like uh, bank accounts that money needs to come in and out of and out of, which you need to add that functionality into uh, Drupal Commerce to track that. And I'm kind of getting nods from John over there suggesting that there might be something like this on the way. Okay, sweet. Um, I went looking for it to show it today and I couldn't find it. Um, so that's really exciting to hear. So yes. So, yep, it's not something I've personally done, but there are some really, really good Drupal Commerce uh, sites out there that are doing pretty much that out of Drupal Commerce, where there are multiple front ends, different stores, different personalities with same content back end. Having said that, it wouldn't be that hard to do. Drupal already has many many exciting mechanisms for allowing you to have different content displayed to different users under different domains and bits and pieces like that. And because Drupal Commerce uses all of the normal Drupal building blocks, anything you would normally do to enable a multi-site, multi-domain kind of environment within a single Drupal install, you can then apply that same logic and bits and pieces to Drupal Commerce and get the benefits of having a single back office management system. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that I haven't really shown you that is actually worth having a bit of a look at is what the back office process looks a bit like. Because if you're going to be a store owner and you want to manage your orders, here and here I can see what all of my orders look like. I can very quickly edit this order. You can see I've got my blue one. It's still in the shopping cart state. So they haven't actually got through and completed it. So I can see it. So if you want to do something like cart recovery, you've got users who have logged into your site, got partway through the checkout process, and you want to contact them to say, hey, you never finished your checkout. Did you actually forget to do it? Or you know, did you hate our products? Did we, were we too expensive? Whatever else like that. If, you, if they've logged into the site, you can get their contact details and send them emails and bits and pieces and know that. We can filter this list um, by status. So if I just want to see the things that are preparing shipment, I can get an error because I believe I don't have clean URLs enabled. And I think that's what's going on there. And I'm going to end up in an infinite loop here. So we're just going to close that. We might just force quit Safari. And I can't open Safari again. So we'll just come over here to Chrome. And if we go to the production site, oh, that's my iPad, quit. Uh, where is Chrome? It's here. come in here where we have production. This one doesn't actually use the password admin, just in case you were wondering. Um, and 
uh, I can go into orders here and eh, it's an interesting problem. Someone else can work out what's going on there at a later stage. We'll get that fixed. But you can see orders and bits and pieces and uh, filter by statuses and a range of things. And I'm quite, not quite sure why it's not working at the moment, but we'll work on that later. Um, and uh, you can mass update product statuses and shipments. If you've got a lot of things you want to ship together, you can grab all of that and go. And you can get quite sophisticated shipping uh, and tracking information uh, tagged back into, the, back into the site and the engine. Yes? Yes? Yeah, so um, if you've got an existing site that you want to commerce enable, um, unfortunately you really have to add the modules yourself and do some of the base integration. So um, to kind of give you a, a high level idea, when you work with commerce, the, the, the fundamental thing you have is you, you've got a distinction between your products which you sell and the way that your products are displayed. So what you do is you create a product type and your product types have uh, all of the information about those products. So that might be the size, the color, what brand it is, um, all those sorts of things. Um, you then have uh, a product display node, which groups multiple of those products together. And there's some glue in the standard commerce install, which makes that a little bit easier uh, to kind of get up and running. And then basically you treat it like any other content type within Drupal. So it's, it's not that hard. And my talk last year, goes over a lot of how you do that by hand and how you uh, build your custom product types and how you build your uh, custom product node displays to display some of that information. So encourage you to look at that. And then you can just add it onto an existing Drupal site. Any other questions? Fantastic. Well, if, you've got to, if you do think of anything you'd like to ask, you can uh, catch me on Twitter at Andrew Yeager. Um, you can also uh, leave some comments and feedback on the uh, 2013.drupal.org website under this session, and I'd love to hear what you have to say. Thank you very much.